What about if you're an experienced player, but you've been stuck in that rut of inefficient playing? Well, this is what that could look like. This vertical bouncy motion is a textbook example of what we call in cracking the code, string hopping. It's a type of inefficient wrist technique leading to arm tension and a very low maximum speed limit. This player told us that their maximum speed with this picking technique was 110 to 120 beats per minute, 16th notes. And right away, knowing what we've, we saw when we did our table tap tests, that's an indication to you probably that there's something wrong with the technique itself. And this is kind of the core concept of most, if not all, speed limited challenges with picking technique, nine times out of 10, 95 times out of 100. When a player comes to you and tells you that they have a very low maximum speed limit, you look at the technique, surprise, they're just not doing it right. They don't have genetic speed limiting problems. They're not physically incapable of fast motion. They're just using the wrong motion. It's a motion that feels tensiony and can't go fast and is such a common pitfall that we actually incorporated it into the early Cracking the Code dramatic episodes as almost kind of a villain. The string hopper appears almost as an enemy weapon to shoot down your efforts at learning smooth picking. If you look at this while I'm doing this from audience perspective, which is the way the camera is facing, it just kind of looks like the hand going back and forth and doing an alternate picking motion. It's only when you look at it under the magnet that you start to begin to get a sense that maybe something is a little bit different about this motion when you notice that bouncy appearance. pick is actually making a semicircle in the air. So it's sort of starting up here, coming down, hitting the string, and then going back up into the air again at the end of the pick stroke. And then the upstroke is the reverse of that, starting in the air, hitting the note, and then coming back again. This in and of itself isn't necessarily a negative thing. There are picking motions that do this, which fall into a general category that we call double escape motions. And it is possible to do a double escape motion sort of similar to this in a way that's efficient. But this motion goes one step further. And the big reason why this doesn't work is the muscle usage. If we think about the way that you would actually have to move to make this happen, imagine the pick starting sort of here and then flexing the wrist to come down and hit the string and then extending or lifting the wrist out the other side to finish the pick stroke. Now the upstroke would be the reverse. I would flex down to hit the string and extend or lift out the other side to finish the pick stroke. And this flexing and extending has to happen on every note. That's the trick, the muscle reuse. It breaks the first rule of true alternate picking, which is that you have to use separate muscles for the downstroke and the upstroke. Instead, in this case, when I flex, I'm using these muscles here on the underside of my forearm. Those are my wrist flexors. And I'm pulling down to hit the string. And then when I lift or extend out, I'm using these muscles on the, uh, the top side of my forearm. And if you just do this in the air right in front of you, you'll feel these muscles tense up. Well, the same thing is happening on the underside of the forearm when you pull down to hit the string. If you do this, you'll feel these muscles tense as well. So you're having tension of the flexors and extensors on the downstroke, and then you have tension of the flexors and extensors on the upstroke. There is no rest period to allow me to recover fast enough in time to get to the next note or the next pick stroke without tension. That's part of the problem. The other problem is that bouncy appearance. When you look at this motion, it's almost like a pecking or a V-shaped motion that it's making. Now, alternate picking already switches directions pretty aggressively. We're going down, then we're completely making a 180 and coming back. But with string hopping, we're adding yet another change in direction. We're adding an up and down component. And this, again, is also pretty aggressive. We're going down, and then we're almost making, if not quite a 180, we're definitely making kind of a pointy V shape to the motion. It would be like throwing a heavy object in one direction and then quickly yanking it back to fight that inertia and make it come back in the other direction. That's a lot of muscular force comparatively um, to what you're already uh, inputting into this motion to get it to change direction now in, in two different ways aggressively like on a dime. So these two criteria then are what makes string hopping inefficient. You have the, muscle, the, the muscles being reused on the downstroke and the upstroke, and then you have the aggressive change in direction, all of which adds up to the tension factor of doing this that puts you above the burnout threshold. For most people, when they do a motion like this, 
within seconds of starting it, they can already feel that tension building up in the arm and they won't be able to go too fast either. There's a speed limit here where you really feel like you can't do it much more than about, about that speed. And so within maybe one or two bars of 16th notes, you're already feeling that burn and you want to quit. So right away, string hopping is a motion that simply doesn't work because the nature of the motion is physically, essentially not really alternate picking. Now, to make matters more confusing, expert players do actually use string hopping. And one of the most famous examples of an expert player using string hopping is the awesome Eric Johnson. This is Eric's instructional video called Total Electric Guitar. And there's a scene on here where Eric describes his picking motion as what he calls the bounce technique. It's what I call the bounce technique. It's rather than playing side by side, it's a, it's a question of... You can see right there the bouncy motion of the hand, clearly a string hopping motion. He even says that using this motion might function as a good warm up because that tension feeling teaches you to relax to avoid the tension. The idea is just to keep that, you gotta keep the wrist loose to get that. It's a little harder to work on. I usually use that to warm up with, you know, really to, you know, to keep uh, that uh, very agile. The trick here is that when Eric does play fast, he actually switches the picking motion to be more of a true efficient alternate picking technique. The idea of the bounce comes in when you're playing fast. When he gets to the higher speed lines, he switches techniques. The problem for the rest of us is if we don't do that. So the solution to it is exactly as, as we've, uh, we've been using. It's go fast, turn off your analytical brain, don't worry about trying to get all the notes right, just find us a fast motion right now from day one. So that's the homework we gave this player. He came back in three days with this. Now this is a huge improvement. Not only is the speed higher, but look at the motion itself. It's very obviously not a string hopping motion anymore. Gone is that vertical bouncy motion trajectory, replaced instead with a smooth back and forth picking motion. What kind of motion is this? Well, you now know a little bit about how different picking motions work. And there's a simple test that you can do to determine what this is, and it's right here. The wiggle zone, let's take a look. Sure enough, this is a forearm technique. And this is really cool because even though the primer has detailed instructions for performing forearm motion, we clarified with the player that they had not actually watched that section of the primer yet. This is simply what happened when we told this individual to go fast. And we were talking about this in the forearm motion testing uh, lesson where we said sometimes some players just have this motion for reasons which they can't remember because they learned it some, at some previous point in life through some other motion that they were making that used the forearm joint. So this is really cool because we're utilizing this person's life experience to lead them to a picking motion which is already working great. And just as a point of reference, this motion is now anywhere between 175 and 180 beats per minute 16th notes, much faster than a string hopping technique could go. If you had full command of picking motions and this speed range, you would absolutely be able to play some truly face melting stuff. Here's the great Glenn Campbell, absolutely blowing people away at 175 beats per minute, 16th notes. As I dream of my Amazing stuff. Glenn is an all time great. That's wrist motion that Glenn is using. But nevertheless, if this were somehow your cruise speed, man, that would be a lot of music that you could make at that tempo. So this is an, an incredible result. And this player had spent maybe three, four years with intensely practicing at these slower speeds using the string hopping motion. And this leads us to one of the most important concepts in learning picking motions or really any physical skill at all. You cannot judge the correctness of the skill by the output. In other words, in the case of musical picking technique, you can't judge the correctness of the motion by the correctness of the notes. Notice in the before example, the string hopping motion is actually good playing. This is not beginner level musical playing here. We have arpeggio lines, scalar lines, all kinds of cool stuff. The accuracy is high, that's not the issue. If you only heard the recording of this playing, you would think, hey, that's great guitar playing. You would have no idea that the technique used to produce it is so far off course and that the correct, better technique was simply right around the corner, but only on a single note. So when you're first learning a new skill, you can't use the musical correctness as a judge of motion correctness, not by itself. Instead, you have to evaluate motions on their own by 
helping them weed out or avoid the pitfalls of doing things inefficiently. And again, our most reliable and valuable test for that is speed. By going faster than in a string hopping technique would go, we simply make it impossible to do string hopping. And the only option left is through some process of trial and error to find a motion that works better. Cracking the Code viewers, are you working on your pick and motion? Because if so, you've got to check out the pick slanting primer. We got all kinds of fun hands-on tests, just like the one you're watching. We got speed tests, like tests of every of kind of pick and motion. Van Halen wrist motion, Deliola wrist motion, Tricep elbow motion, time. forearm motion. We got close-up shots, overhead shots. Everything you need to learn this stuff. You can get it as part of a subscription, either short time or a long time. You could buy a copy, and if you do, you get free updates for life. We've got people that bought this thing five years ago and are still getting multiple free updates per year. We add hours of new stuff every year as we conduct more interviews and learn more about how technique works. So head on over to TroyGrady.com forward slash primer. Check it out.